King's Island is issuing a fear warning for the city of Cincinnati and the surrounding areas. Halloween Haunt will make landfall on September 24th and is expected to induce terror until the 30th of October. All patrons are advised to take caution. Unspeakable horrors are among us, and there's no hope of escape. Halloween Haunt, fear is waiting for you. Come and get it. <laughs> Halloween Haunt Admission is included with your Gold Pass or buy a ticket at visitkingsisland.com. The following show contains adult content. It's not our intent to offend anyone, but we want to inform you that if you are a child under the age of 18 or get offended easily, this next show may not be for you. The content, opinions, and subject matter of these shows are solely the choice of your show hosts and their guests, and not those of the Entertainment Network or any affiliated stations. Any comments or inquiries should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for listening. Hey ho ho, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, bringing you the good times in music, fashion, pop culture, and entertainment. We got a fun show for you guys today, plus an update on our fabulous weekend in New York that we're going to do on the second part of the show, because we have a guest on the first part of the show. But before we get started, let's first say hi to our cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. We who are about to die salute you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is, I mean, really and truly, we left Manhattan at 2 in the afternoon. We got to Palm Springs at 3 o'clock. 3.30. Mor- 3.30 in the morning. Had one or two hours sleep. I, forget about it. This is not, I, I can't. I, I don't know how I'm going to do a show today. Besides, I look old. You know, I don't look 23. I'm, I'm, I look tw- at least 40. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm going to try to perk up and wake up. And, uh, and oh, look at this. I look like shit. I didn't shave. They took our toothpaste away, so I didn't brush my teeth. So my breath smells. <sighs> I knocked over three people. Yeah, you know, you're not allowed to take toothpaste on the airplane. Yeah, I didn't know that. toothpaste can explode. I said, oh, really? Okay. That's interesting. They let me take it on the way over there. Well, the next, I like time, the next time you teeth. brush your teeth, be careful. Your mouth might explode. But anyway, um, it was an adventure not to be believed. Um I wanted to go. Oh, not, yeah, wait, wait. We're talking about it in the second half. We're not going to talk about it now. I we want have to talk guest, about that. We have the we, we have, have the guest chat room coming too. on. We, we want to say hi to the chat room. There's lots of people in here. I think Julia is in there. I think that's what that is. Backpack John Hage. Hey, Backpack John is here. Teresa Saban from Florida. Angela Joseph, who was at the Colorado Horror Festival of Horror or something with Lorraine Landon this weekend. No, horror, not horror. She was not a horror at a horror festival. A horror festival. There is no such thing as a whole festival. Anyway, we also have uh, Cindy Lady Lake is in the chat room. Um, I don't know. I think I missed some people, but it went by fast, so they'll have to say stuff. Teresa Saban. Uh, uh, anyway, yes, yeah, she was at the Colorado. I don't know what it what Oh, it's shut called. the fuck up and just sit there and smile a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You know, people say I'm very mean to Jimmy. Like one woman wrote, she said, when I watched the show for the first time, I thought Ron Russell was a very mean man. I'm not mean. Jimmy and I just play. You know that, folks. Jimmy and I never fight. Well, I mean, I had to duck a few knives once in a while that he threw at me, <laughs> yeah. you know, at home in the kitchen. But we really don't fight. We just do it for the amusement of everybody. I like to come on. <clears throat> Excuse me. My throat's full of airline dust, <clears throat> New York City dirt, and L.A. smog. Um I just like to sometimes get like a tough guy. I like, you know, when I was back in New York, I was with all the wise guys in New Jersey and I loved it because we're all talking really tough. Hey, fuck you. And I do that, but I'm not a mean person by any means. Trust me. And I'm very good to Jimmy. I only beat him up maybe sometimes once a day, twice a day. What you guys, if you go on my Instagram, Jimmy star official, you'll see the videos from the Italian fest. Some of the performers, I know lady Lake will love, Alicia, 
Alicia was there. She has all, a bunch of hit songs from the 80s. And anybody who's an 80s music dance lover, like free da freestyle dance music lover, uh, will love the videos uh, of Alicia that were there. And uh, it was really a lot of fun. I've never, it's the first time I've ever been in. I was the only non Italian person in the whole thing. There was 500 people. And they only let him in because he was with me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Meanwhile, we didn't eat for five days. And why does my face look fat? I don't know. I look bloated. We walked 50,000 steps. We walked 50,000 steps and I didn't lose a pound and we barely even ate. So I don't get it. I look fat. I don't, I'm don't. i just, I'm fed up. You know, when I eat a lot, I lose weight. When I don't eat at all, I gain weight. Figure that one out. Talk about being a reverse Gemini. It was very funny. No, um, it wasn't. What was funny? This the whole weekend was funny. We had a good no, time. No, the, the weekend, weekend was fun, but we're not going to talk about it because we do not have a second guest. The second guest was abducted by Martians and taken off to a planet. So we're just But gonna... you can tell them about the plane ride. Oh, the plane ride. They know what plane rides are. I mean, give me a break. JetBlue is the best and it still stinks. I mean, there's no, I hit my head on the top of the thing. I got knocked out. I mean, I couldn't fit. I had to pee four times and the broad on the end was annoyed that she had to get up the grand queen that she was with those fingernails six feet long and eyelashes that went to the first class cabin. I never saw such eyelashes in my life. What was she in drag or she's going to go on stage in Vegas? I mean, come on, girls, knock it off. You could put lashes on, but not when they're out four or five inches. That's a bit stupid. She looked like Elsie the cow. The plane <clears throat> ride over was fabulous. The plane ride back wasn't as fabulous. The plane wasn't as nice. No, it wasn't. And it was crowded. And and then when we landed, the, the fuses blew somewhere in the tower, and they couldn't let us out of the plane. So we had it, to sit on the tarmac. I, you're gonna, you, you want me to tell? I'm going to put this mic right down your throat. No, yeah, I'm talking to you. And you're going to goggle. You, well, let me know when you're interrupting. Okay, I'm interrupting. We were stuck on the tarmac for how long, Ron? Oh, excuse me, my finger just flew by. <laughs> How long were we stuck on the tarmac for? About an hour and a half of torture because we were just five and a half hours in the air. We took a beautiful a Cadillac um, Escalade. Escalade taxi from New York City to the airport. Well, the guy was so nice. We chatted. He gave me a tour of all the neighborhoods I lived in. And it took about two and a half, three hours, which you, you normally would be a 40-minute ride. And he took us all over Sunnyside and Woodside and Queens Boulevard, Forest Hills, Rigo Park, Astoria, all over. And it was really interesting, but it was sitting in another vehicle for, for four hours. Finally, we got to the airport, which I hate Kennedy Airport and I hate LAX. Those are two airports that I will never fly in and out of again. From now on, when we leave for California, we're going to try going out of Ontario Airport, which is not far from here. And that goes into LaGuardia, which is a beautiful airport. And LaGuardia is only 25 minutes to Manhattan with traffic and a cab. Speaking of cabs, well, Jimmy had an appointment up on 42nd Street. We're on <clears throat> 29th Street. And the cab fare would have been $54. No, $35. Oh, 34. It's the same thing, 54 35 Turn it around. Anyway, <laughs> I told you, <clears throat> excuse me for doing this, but I'm losing my throat, my voice. Jimmy and I, I said, Jimmy, we're going to walk. This is New York, and I'm a walker. Let's walk. So we walked. It was no big deal. And as we walked, we had a puddle jump because the urine was all over the place. I mean, pee, people just pee. And I spoke with a very nice black cop. He was a doll. And I said to him, I thank you so much for doing what you're doing. I'm, I back you guys. But what's going on with these homeless people? Can't you arrest them? Didn't we have a vagrancy law years ago in New York? And he said, yeah, but that's gone. He said, no, we can't even talk to them. He said, because they'll sue us. I said, you got to be kidding. He said, no. I said, but they're peeing in the street. He said, well, not only are the homeless peeing in the street, but a lot of a new um, people from other countries are peeing in the street. A lot of Latin American countries, it's okay to pee up against the wall if you have to go. So I thought, that's really nice. You know, let's just whip it out and pee against the wall. So now we're across the street from the Waldorf Astoria walking towards 42nd Street, and there were three huge puddles of urine that I had to jump over. And I thought to myself, this is not normal. Homeless people, you yes, they have them in New York City. One guy laying there sleeping with his balls and his ass out. I mean, really? Now, you walk by with your young daughter. You want her to see this filthy human being laying on the floor with his balls and his ass hanging out? 
and the cop at least pulls his pants up. I mean, it's disgraceful. I mean, L.A. is bad. New York is bad. L.A. is bad in areas. New York is bad in areas. You go to the Upper East Side, which is a very white Jewish neighborhood. It's divine. You go below 59th Street. It's an ethnic area of mixed people. It's poor and not so divine. You know, same and thing. Expensive. With, and expensive. Same thing with L.A. You go to Beverly Hills, Brentwood. You go to any of those wonderful areas. It's divine. You go down to East L.A. It ain't so divine. So that's what we live in. I don't know diversity will ever happen. I think it's a, a dream that people have. It's never going to happen because everybody wants to be with their own. The Hispanics are in one area of New York. The 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 the, the Ecuadorians in another. The Dominican Republic in another. The Puerto Ricans in another. And I thought, Jesus Christ, what happened to diversity? Black people are clustered together in black groups. And then the two or three white people that I did see downtown, which was amazing because it used to be all white ones. I mean, New York City was an all white city. Now the white people, I don't know where they went, but Jimmy and I at times were the only white people in the areas. And I thought to myself, at least we're practicing diversity. Where the fuck is everybody else? So we want to. We, we so wanna, I don't know what's going on, folks. But anybody who says that like L.A. is a, a shithole and all the people always come and they say how terrible L.A. is. Well, go to New York. Go to New York. It's no different. It's just I mean, it's Same. terrible. Unfortunately, it's terrible in both places. So uh, we used to always think maybe they were right. But we saw so many you know homeless people and stuff. It was just really sad. But we had thing, a blast, though. The only thing we did not see was tent villages like we have in L.A. We have villages of tents, no tents in L in New York. They just sleep on the ground, on the concrete. I found that fascinating how this naked, half-naked man was lying in his urine on the sidewalk where people had to st almost step over him. See, in L.A., you drive, so you don't smell or get your feet wet in the urine because you're in a car. But you look and you see it. In New York City, you're walking, so you smell it. Now, it was like 88 degrees. You know, when the sun hits the urine, what it smells like? Don't ask. And I kept saying to Jimmy, hold your breath. Hold your breath. That's not my New York. You know, New York City doesn't belong to me anymore. It belongs, I don't know who. When I was young, we had none of that nonsense. It was a clean, beautiful city of elegant people. Now it's a, a city of, of, I don't know why, people just running around not understanding what the city's about throwing crap on the floor you know you can't garbage do, everywhere you can't do that anyway i mean i want to welcome all of the new people coming into our country i do welcome you but please respect us respect our cities respect our countries don't throw junk out of the parkway window grand central parkway was always clean beautiful now i saw taco things and mcdonald things all on the side of the road don't throw things out of the car window in my city you know go back to where you came from and do it if you like doing it there go back home you could throw all the shit and garbage you want out the window you're care. right Teresa. i couldn't care less anyway but, but wait a minute i'm not finished with my preach so when you come to new york city or if you come to los angeles which are both my cities welcome but please respect our laws our language and our city and our police now when the military was all over the airport soldiers with rifles it's quite disconcerting but i went up to each and every soldier and jimmy will tell you and i said boys thank you so much for what you're doing thank you for keeping us safe and they were so grateful yep and I would suggest to all of you out there to do the same thing. When you see the military boys protecting the Empire State Building as they were, I mean, New York was totally under military um, cover because they were so afraid that they were going to blow up one of the major buildings, you know, the Afghanistan and those motherfuckers. But anyway, they were going to blow up something in New York. So the military it was, it was scary because we saw, you know, guns all over. I've never seen uh, rifles and machine guns in New York City. I mean, it, it was quite an, an experience. We had a good time, though. But we had a ball in spite of it because of our friends. I couldn't find pancakes. What happened to the Jewish delis, the Greek diners, and the Italian restaurants? We, stuff, we gotta go. The Italian, we went for Italian food. It was horrible. I went to see the oh, chef. The Italian food was terrible. The chef, the chef was from Nicaragua or some other Latin co country. They're not Italians cooking. In the, we went to Ferrara's Bakery downtown, and there was an African-American selling the, the pastries which i like that idea but years ago that would never happen 
and the kitchen, who knows what. So we're not really getting the ethnic food that we had years ago in New York cooked by the ethnic people. Of- we ate in Little Italy and there was no Italians. <laughs> <laughs> no Italians. We went to a feast in New Jersey, and it was all Hispanic and black. I think there was just uh, two buildings of Italian people. I said, this is an Italian feast. Anyway, we got to go, though, because we got a guest, and we have people we got to say hi to. Let's okay. say hi. We want to say hi. Goddess has joined us in the chat room. Jason Taylor joined us in the chat room. Dave from Stars Now. Dave Hughes has joined us in the chat room. And our guest has joined us in the chat room. So, you guys, we got a great guest for you guys today, David Chokachi. What's up? How are you? You look fabulous. I know. Thank you. How are you guys doing? We're good. Uh, How I, are I, you? I've, I know you. I've seen you around. We went. He went to the Clown Motel premiere f- with you. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I, you know, names I stink with. I'm so old. I can't even, like I said, I don't even remember where my dick is when I have to pee. But I names- think he had a beard, though, then. Did you have a beard? Uh- I did for a while, and then I shaved it. I think it was shaved by the time when I saw it. Oh, you. okay, okay. Yeah, you yeah. look fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember. Thanks, I, thought, I think you 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 were a nice guy. I thought. So hold on, we're going to do a real intro now that we know we can we're hear. Tired. We're very tired. Yeah, we just got us. back from New uh, a big event in New York City, and so we got home at four o'clock this morning. So it's very fun. But anyway, you guys, now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the actor who never ages. You know him from Baywatch and about a hundred zillion other things. Um, we want to welcome him to the show. So, David Chok- Chokachi, hello and welcome. Thank you so much, Jimmy and Ron. How you guys doing? We are fabulous. Besides not, not the fact too, being not tired. Not too hot. Not too hot. <laughs> You're not going to get a Ron Russell explosive, crazy interview today. You're going to get. He a very- says that now. Well, maybe if I wake up. Yes. But um, last name, ethnic background. It's an interesting Chokichi. name. Yes. Yeah. Greek, Chinese. No. No. So my. Believe it or not, my dad was born in the Middle East. Okay. My dad was born in Iraq, and the name uh, was originally uh, like Al Chokichi. And then when he came to this country, Al in Arabic means Mister. So when he came to the United States, you kind of drop the Al and spell it the way I do. Um, but yeah, he was born in uh, outside of Baghdad, and my mom has uh, Scandinavian roots. Fabulous. So, so that's her why you're her mom's from Finland. So you've got milk white and chocolate. You're like me. A little yeah. bit. Yeah, that's what makes good looking. But you know, <laughs> when I started in the business, they said my name was too ethnic and nobody could ever pronounce it, change it. So I became Russell. Did anybody ever advise you to change your last name to like Smith? No. <laughs> no, Hasseloff tried, but I'm like, no, I'm not changing my name. You see, I didn't. I, back in 1959, we had no choice. Change your name, or you don't work. Because wow. we do not. We don't. Well, we don't. They didn't want Italians uh, to be in film. They thought Italians were sort of like you know, like what the people of like they, how they treat the people today from other countries. It's funny though. So we have a chat room. Literally, uh, lots of places in there. Everybody's talking about how young you still look and how good looking you still are, which is yeah. very nice. So say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hey, what's up in the chat room? How you guys doing? There'll be a lot of people coming in. And- you sound like you have a New York accent. How you doing? How you doing? I think I, I just th- from hearing you guys talk. <laughs> you, know, you know what? You had to hear me when I, I got there. I cracked up laughing. I said, oh, I'm so happy to be back. With- now nobody will say you have a New York accent. And the guy said to me, you don't have a New York accent. I said, what? <laughs> he said, no. He said, maybe a little. I said, well, take me to Brooklyn quick. So it's amazing. Here I have a thick New York accent. There I have a little accent. So really, are you from New York? No, I'm from uh, it's just a town south of Boston called Plymouth, Massachusetts. Okay, so pack the car. Pack the car. My mom, who's still alive, uh, yeah, she has a wicked accent still. It's it's hilarious. But I, I always I, I kind of got rid of mine when I moved to California. I just um, I never had it that bad back. Even though I went to college up in Maine, my I kind of lost it pretty quickly, which was good because back then they, they would stereotype you as uh, he's got his accent's too strong. We can't can't we can't use him. I like love that though. Well, that's true because they, they will pick you out. They don't realize that an actor can lose or develop any accent. That's what we oh, do. Yeah. We're, we're called actors, but they'll say, "Oh no, well that guy he speaks you like you in case." They'll say, "Oh, he speaks Bostonian. We can't use him." Well, how about he wants to speak Brooklynese? He'll do that too. He's an actor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I have a question because like everybody in the chat room is talking about your Cody and Baywatch, and it's so funny because like I watch Baywatch, but. Yeah, actually, I actually liked um, 
I actually like Witchblade and some of the other stuff like a whole lot. Oh, yeah. you know, I, I wasn't all that big of a Baywatch thing, even though I thought David Hasselhoff was cute. But uh, no, Baywatch, uh, Baywatch was it really called Chick Watch? But I like Pan. I liked it. I mean, it was such a cool show, and we've met a whole bunch of people from it. But so it was and Baywatch. I met, I wait, met, wait, wait, wait. I met David years ago, and you know what he said that he had animals in his house that. I don't know if I should say this. No, don't say it then. <laughs> that used to make wee wee all over the house. <laughs> uh, well, ours do that too. So, uh, so, so was Baywatch one of your first, like your first really big thing? It, it was. It definitely was. You know, um, I moved to California in '94, uh, about two days before the North Northridge earthquake, and then. Um, oh, welcome to California. <laughs> yeah, I got here on a Saturday, and um, hey, Bruce. <laughs> I got here on Saturday, and the earthquake kicked off on Sunday or Monday morning at like four in the morning. Oh my gosh, that's terrible! That's so a terrible way to first get there. And then how did that? that turn, how did, I said that's a terrible first thing to happen when you get there. And then how did you actually? So how did you actually get Baywatch? Did you have to like audition so, a bunch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a small before I even moved to California. I had a small agency. It was called um, Hero. It was a modeling agency. And they had a small theatrical department and they, they were the ones who got the audition and they were looking to replace one of the main young actors on the show. And I got the uh, opportunity to go in and audition and, you know, it was a long process. It was, I don't know how many, how many auditions, screen tests, uh, meetings, swim tests. I had to, I had to go through all these levels and, um, you know, in the end, I, I was the guy. Like, but when I walked into the room, what happened was the casting directors. I hadn't said a word. I just walked in. Um, they've been looking at the East Coast, the West Coast. Probably, I don't know how many guys they saw. Like over a thousand. I walk in, and they go. They're like talking, and they look up, and they're like, and they're like, "Holy shit, you're the guy. You're the guy we've been looking for." I hadn't said a word, and then I was like what <laughs> you know and then it was kind of up to me to and luckily i had worked on the material over and over and and i was able to deliver it and you know kind of every step of the way you know stay even though i was freaking out inside stay calm on the outside so they didn't see what was happening and um <laughs> yeah did you really it, have to know how to swim then you really had to swim of course it's yeah they, they 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 had cast someone years before I got there, and uh, it was a female. I didn't know her name, but she turns out was like terrified of sharks, and they did, she didn't tell this to them. Anyway, they end up casting her, and then she tells them, and so every time she had to do a rescue, they she would run to the water ankle deep, um, the yell cut, put in the stunt person, stunt person goes out does the rescue, <laughs> and then she comes back in. Now you <laughs> shot you shot up at Zuma Beach, and I know Zuma well. Uh, they have sharks up at Zuma. They're all up and down the coast. I mean, it's just we don't really see them. You know, there's little babies everywhere, and occasionally they see a bigger one here and there. But you know, I'm a big surfer. I surf out at Point Doom all the time, and I've I've never seen one. And I've asked all the guys who surf there, and um, only one guy who's been there for surfing there for like 25 years said he saw one. Uh, one large great white at one point but that was it and the funny thing is there's all kinds of sea life right there close to shore there's tons of seals tons of dolphins so it's they're coming it's, to eat it could them. be a, a place for them to, to be cruising yeah well zuma beach folks for those of you out there that don't are not familiar with it is where they shot the planet of the apes if you remember the statue of liberty when she was sticking out of the water and there was a big cliff well that's zuma beach and that's where baywatch was shot now pamela anderson my daughter handled her my daughter was her business manager and she said oh, pamela, you're kidding. yeah she said pamela was a sweet my daughter worked for platinum uh, uh, platinum, whatever company, and, and, and <laughs> long time ago, I forgot what it's called. Platinum, whatever, whatever. Yeah, she handled a lot of movie stars, and she said Pamela was a doll. In fact, Pamela was up at the office one day, and Leslie said, "Oh my God, let me see the ring, the famous engagement ring." And Pamela took it off. She said, "Here, honey, put it on. See what it feels like." And my daughter said she could never use. It was uncomfortable. The damn thing was heavy and swung around. Anyway, did you work a lot with Pamela? Yeah, Pamela was my girlfriend on the show for two years, so we okay. worked together all, quite a bit. And you know, like they would always have these scenes where we're making out or montages where we're chasing each other in the water. And 
playing basketball or all these things. So, yeah, man, I, my character, I, I get to have a lot of fun. And Pamela was, you know, she was amazing. She, uh, her and I were very self-deprecating. Um, we love to kind of screw around behind the, behind the scenes and just not, not in a uh, sexual way, but just kind of, yeah, we, we didn't fun. take the whole thing so seriously, you know, right. I think that allowed for our, our chemistry to be that much stronger on screen when it, when it, when the episodes air. It's called, it's called relax and it's very visible on screen. <laughs> when you you're relaxed, you're, I can tell you right away, well, because I'm in the business a thousand years, but I could tell you right away in a movie if they get along off screen and if yeah. they get you can tell you know when you you're in the bu- when you're in the business i mean i won't mention who but there was two people that were on a show making out and they hated each other and boy was it obvious and it doesn't do good for the film no but the, but the gp doesn't see it they don't get it because they're not in it but you right. could tell you could tell and i could tell we know who the the fighters yeah, are yeah. that's but that's, my daughter loved fun. pamela she said she was lovely just a sweet girl. Oh, she's a she's a beautiful human being. Like, yeah, yeah, you know she went through some hard times, and and she got yes. through them. And I think she's got she has two two grown kids, beautiful kids, and I think she's found happiness. You know, which right. is which is great. Did you ever see the Borat movie? Like when he's like going to see Pamela. I mean, I think that was like the funniest thing. Like I love uh, those. It, it's ridiculously, it's so man, insanely man. stupid, but it's so funny. But the oh, fact man, that he, yeah, yes, he's, yeah, he's man, going man. to see her. Yes, I freaking like love it. So you've done so many things. We're gonna talk about some of your actually, uh, some of your things that you've done just recently. But I just want to like uh, bring up a couple other things. You guys could have seen um, David in the Witchblade series with Yancey Butler, which I'm bringing her name up because she's also in the film. We're gonna talk about in a minute. Yep. Um, but I wanted to ask real quick uh, about a couple other things that you did. Uh, how was it like being on Battle of the Network Stars, and, uh, and how do you get picked for that? Because that seems like really cool, and I could, that was a big thing back in the day. Oh, the shit. That was so fun. I, was, I couldn't wait. That was just um, – that was one of those beautiful incoming calls that, it, you know, and it's like, hey, do you want to go run around and do all these cool athletic events and get paid a lot of money? You know, like, <laughs> definitely. Um, so yeah, we, I got to do that with Parker Stevenson was in it. Um, oh, and well, he's in the movie that we're talking about in yeah, a minute too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's so funny though. Cause now, they pick we, all the pretty muscular people. So everybody gets to see him running around I mean, without a they, shirt. They, they didn't pick me. <laughs> they missed me. Cause that was such a big deal. And I used to love it when they would do that and they would have all the celebrities, you know, like, you know, battling against each other. I thought it was so much fun. And then another thing, which I didn't even realize it was you. And I watched it when it came out. Um, Because now we live in Palm Springs, but the Christmas in Palm Springs movie with Patrick Muldoon and Dina Meyer and Ian Ziering and Aaron Gray. I didn't even know that was you in it. So now when it comes on this Christmas, I'm going to watch it again. That movie was. Yeah, yeah. That movie was such a lie. You have to live in Palm Springs. Thursday, (laughs) tomorrow is going to be 111. In Palm Springs? Yeah, it's freaking hot still. At this time of year, which global warming is happening, folks. We never have this time of year 111. It's usually 90. Cool down to 90, 100, 99 or 100. So my 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 last thing before we start talking about the new films is so you haven't typecast yourself, which I find to be really cool because unfortunately a lot of people get typecast. You know, You're doing like family me. films, Christmas films, dog films, horror films, <laughs> dramas. I mean, you you've done something of everything, and is that a was that a conscientious decision on your part, or was that just what was given to you and you you picked the ones you liked, or how did that actually come about that you didn't get pigeonholed to only do one thing? It's kind of a mixed. Uh mixed bag of how it works you know a lot of times um for some of these movies you get offered them so they're just it's it's mainly like do you like the story and do you like how much they want to pay you to be an actor in this movie um and then other ones you know like the like which blade was a big auditioning process where i had to do uh do a network test and then do a studio test you know when they when they're bigger shows it it, it basically you really have to go fight for those. Um, I did another TV show called Beyond the Break that we shot in Hawaii, and that one I had to go in multiple times to fight for the role. Um, yeah, and, and then you know it's it's kind of it's kind of where you are, where you're at as a human being in the time. If if you kind of can relate to the material, or sometimes, in all honesty, as actors, we're just you know we go crazy in between jobs, and we just want to work. So. Maybe that's why I was doing the dog movie at the time. You're like, yeah, I'll go do a talking dog movie. Who cares? 
you know, <laughs> all, all, all you just want to be on set. And you have to keep yourself working, otherwise you get stale, as we say. Yes. You know, years ago, 50 years ago, I'm in the business 64 years, I'm 81. So I came into business 64 years ago. There were half the amount of actors there are today. Probably And less double even. the amount of roles to do. So <laughs> really? getting, a, yeah, so getting an, I mean, I was, I played with Sophia Loren and Tab Hunter in a movie, please, when I was 19, my first movie. Who gets a break like that? Nobody. Back in 1959, you could. Try it today. There'll be 3,000 guys stabbing you, shooting you, sh you know, beating the <laughs> shit out of you so you couldn't get to the audition. So I find that today, I get work now because I'm ancient. And they, every time they need an old bag, they yeah, say, you don't look, You're 81? 81, yeah. You look, you don't look like, you look way younger than that. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, everybody th tells th them. Th <laughs> thank you. Thank you. If you want to have dinner and pick out China, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> But seriously, seriously, when they want an old bag, they hire me. I get more work. I got six movies lined up. I got three out right now. When in my career did that ever happen? So I'm wow. telling well, I'm telling you to look forward to this. Stay attractive when you're 80. You'll still be working because we need diversity. And we are now, cons me, old bags are considered diverse people. <laughs> So you're gonna so get a, you're fun. gonna have a long career, my friend, because you're a young. Fella. He's already had and he's already been doing no, it 25 a, years. Yeah, but he's a young fellow. When he's my age, he's gonna have some hell of a career, and you will work at my age. Thank you. I sure I certainly hope so. No, you will if you if you if you are a good actor and if you stay in the business with the the same joie de vie that you had when you were young. That excited, right, right. you know, you can't ever get stale, as I said, or. Uh, bored. If you're bored with your work, you're never gonna work. Yeah, no, you gotta, gotta like love it. Yeah, so even, even if the part is shitty, it's okay. You're on the set. You got lines to remember. Every time you remember lines, you're exercising the brain. Absolutely. You know, I have a lot of friends. Uh, Vincent Price. I mean, I'm gonna name drop because I don't give a shit. Uh, Vincent Price uh, couldn't remember lines to save his ass, and Vinny had a lot of trouble with. You know who Vincent Price is, of course. You do know Vincent Price. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. And because Jane Russell was my best friend, and she couldn't. I said, Jane, we could get you in movies. Why don't you come back? She says, I can't remember lines. That's the problem. And I can't remember lines. But now we have earplugs <laughs> that we put in, and they feed us a line if we drop it. Johnny Depp does it. Al Pacino does it. Aaron Robert Palmer De Niro does it. does it. You name them, they does it. Okay, everybody's doing it. <laughs> I know. Because they don't want to learn lines. Actually, do you remember lines pretty easy, David, or you have a trouble with it? You know, the the better the writing is, the easier it is. Like, yeah. I, like for Witchblade, oh. for example, I um, I would read a scene from Witchblade one of in any of our episodes, because done by this awesome guy Ralph Hemmerker, um, and I'd read it like three times, and it would just instantly sink in. But if the material is not good, it it's like it'll take me a couple days to get it down because it just doesn't flow and it doesn't I am right. Dude, that's so why you don't remember. No, because I, <laughs> don't I always say I am so happy you said that. I said my mind hasn't gone. The scripts have gone. Because years ago, I could have three, four, five, seven pages and the grammar was correct and the same sentences had structure. And they made and sense. I, and they made sense. And I understood what the writer was saying and it was character development. Now they throw a script at me and the guy's got, he got dem G's and does and yo, yo, what the <laughs> fuck are they talking about? And you're right. You are, you are 110% right. If the script is right, it's a snap. Yep. I, agree, I agree with you. All right. So here's what we're going to do. First, we want to welcome in everybody in the chat room. Bruce Reisman. He was on our show a couple of months ago. Uh, he's in the chat room. He's actually the writer and director of, of the film that we're going to talk about now with David. Um, the name of the film is called Last Call in the Doghouse. It was title. written and directed by Bruce Reisman. And when we had Bruce on, we couldn't play the trailer for it. But we're going to talk about it for a second. And, and we've worked it out that we think we can play the trailers and music and stuff now without getting Jimmy shut down. Jimmy is a genius. <laughs> Jimmy figured it out. And he's screwing everybody because he does it now. And nobody can stop him. <laughs> We had a problem for two years. We couldn't play it YouTube and we because we're play, live. On, wait, let me explain it. Wait, we were, wait, we couldn't play music we, either. We had famous. 
people are the greatest singers in the world, and we couldn't play their music because YouTube would shut it down. It threw us off the past YouTube because we're live on YouTube, you know, right now. We're live on YouTube five, and at like six over other five, platforms. Over five million people are looking at you, so make sure you have no lettuce on your teeth and smile. <laughs> So here are you guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read a little synopsis that I took uh, off of IMDb for Last Call in the Doghouse. Then we're going to let uh, then we're going to let David uh, actually like uh, introduce the uh, trailer, and we're going to play the trailer so everybody sees it. That way they get a little glimpse of what we uh, what we're talking about before we start talking about it. Sure. All right. So Last Call in the Doghouse. It's written by and directed by Bruce Reisman. Is it Reisman or Reisman? Reisman. Reisman. Okay. Reisman. Sorry, Bruce. Bruce Reisman. Sorry about that, Bruce. I should have remembered that. The Dog House is a legendary New York dive bar owned by an extraordinary family. What kind of bar? Dive bar. Dive? Yeah. Enunciate, darling. Dive Enunciate. bar. They got it. Owned by an extraordinary family. Three people from different backgrounds enter at closing time on separate nights, carrying the world on their shoulders. But by the time each of them leaves after last call... Their souls are saved while two of them realize how connected they are. We'll talk about the cast and everything after we have David uh, 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 introduce the trailer. And Roxy, are you ready with the trailer? I hope, right? It sounds like a good film. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. Oh, it's fantastic. Ready All more. right. All right. All right, David. Rock and roll. Introduce it for us. The Last Call in the Doghouse is a phenomenal film about these characters um, who – work in a bar and um, they all happen to be, well, I play a dog who happens to be God himself. And my son is Jess, who's Jesus. And then my other son is Mo, who's Moses. And these characters will come into our bar. It's almost like the bar is a beacon that draws them in. And the characters that come in have this, have a, 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 something they're struggling with and it's not evident that they don't come running in and kind of blurt it out but through a process of conversation we start talking to them and we find out what their trauma or for one example or ptsd is um and through that we kind of go we go back and forth in time and we actually go back to their traumatic event and we're we're physically in that scene in their event and we're helping them understand and kind of realize that that event was not their problem. And then when we come back to real time, it's as if something has changed within them. Um, it's, it's just a beautiful, it's a mystical, uh, fantastic movie that has so much heart and soul. And um, it just, it, it gives you the feeling of hope, which, you know, in today's world with the pandemic and everything we're all going through, have, delivering that message of hope that Bruce Reisman, you know, wrote and directed, um, it, it, it's really just profound. We need fantasy. We don't have yeah. fantasy today. And we've got to leave the reality of what's going on. And this film, I think, will take you for two hours, ten minutes possibly, into another place. And it's great. So say something fantasy. like, here's the trailer for... Here's the trailer for Last Call in the Doghouse. Right. You really ignore me when I'm speaking directly to you? Look, you get disability. What are you doing living on the streets? I'm going to go to sleep and not wake up. 2.30, last call. Come in with me, I do their books. This is the best bar in New York. Been around for decades, original owners, everyone's family. All right, last call, coming up. Again? There's the door. Do I know you? 54 and below, a couple years back. <laughs> I was doing a lot of shit back then. You could have met God. Bought this place for my sons. They named it after me. I'm Mary. I gave birth to the bartender. They were a match made in heaven. Hi, baby. Dog made his brothers and it's still confusing. 
Well, we can't all be the mighty Moses. Nobody can live up to most of this stuff. You always have to make my problems your problem. Yes, I do. I'm your brother. That's what makes us a great team, you know. For better or worse. These are two of the bravest souls I have ever met. Take care of her, okay? Take care of my girl. How did it happen, Eli? Suck it up and get a drink. He left me. That was a lie, and we all knew it. It's a bad night to call me out. I'm not akin to cruelty. A single actor, lots of it. When we do good deeds, we shouldn't sound trumpets for ourselves, like the hypocrites do in the streets. The memory plays a few tricks sometimes. You understand? Last call in the right bar can be very precious. You just said a mouthful. <laughs> it's my trade, you know. Yay! Clap, 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 clap. It looks fantastic. Looks like looks like um we need something like this. I'm noticing that the names of all the characters are biblical. Yes. So it's gonna be it's, a, good, huh? it's gonna be a film that may inspire people to change some of their ways, you think? Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> I think it's you know, and uh, I've learned also, as many people, like you, you can't internalize your feelings. You know, we all, we all need to express them or talk to another person, and and that's kind of the message here. Like, come in and unburden yourself so you can be free. Right. I, well, we need a lot of that, kiddo. We need yeah. a lot of that today. Uh, are you, you guys? Are, are you a Christian? Well, I. I'm not really any, I grew up Protestant. I grew up in Plymouth, Massachusetts and, you know, we would go to church and, but I, you know, I, I like to believe there's something, someone up there or higher power or, you know, whatever it may be, you know, I, I, I kind of have to, since I am playing God in this, you know, I got to <laughs> You have to believe in yourself. No, right. I believe, I believe that good is God. God is good. That's what I believe. If you're a good person, you're God. Well, we all have God inside of us. That's we, have, true. We, we have evil inside of us, too. Unfortunately, like some of those Afghanistanians that won't let our Americans out. But if you're good, you know, you're godly. Yes. And, I, and, and I think this film might be sending some messages out to some nasty people who need to think it over. Maybe they're not doing the right thing. That's so hang true. on. I want to interrupt. So first of all, you guys, um, this movie is streaming only uh, on stonypointentertainment.com. So if you want to watch this movie, and you do want to watch it because it's a phenomenal movie. I want to watch it. No, you have to go I, to I, I don't watch everything. stonypoint-entertainment.com. There's a couple movies up there uh, that are really good. There's uh, Behind the Curtain, Adam Jacobs, and As Long as I'm Famous, Real Secrets of the Golden Age, which we'll talk about also in a minute yeah, that David this, also stars this, in. What I got out of this film is I might, for once in a long time, I might be seeing a movie that has a story. Wouldn't that be nice for a change? Instead of just blowing yeah. them up a, and a, killing. A beginning, a middle, and an end. And I think I'm, I like, I think I, I can. When, when can I see this, Jim? It's also on Amazon, wait, you wait, guys. Wait, hang on, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Amazon. I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to ask you. I'm going to ask God the star. When can I see your work? It's on Amazon. <laughs> So you're repeating Jimmy now. What are you, stupid? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, no, you can get it on no, Amazon really, Prime. Really, 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 really. Now, listen, we have a lot of people my age out there that say, what in the hell is he talking about Amazon in a boat in the jungle? No. Tell us how to see your movie specifically and easily. So you go to the streaming platform called Amazon Prime Video, and it's you could just type in in the search bar, uh, Last Call in the Doghouse, and it's right there. And if you can't do that, get your grandson to do it or your granddaughter. Exactly. Or just, 
you know, get somebody that's young that knows how to do it. But I would suggest that all my older fans who are watching our show watch this. I think it might make us feel a little easier about being closer to the end. <laughs> so yeah. also then you guys. So listen, if you saw in there, so I think Adam Jacobs, was he Moses? Yes. So Adam Jacobs, you guys, he was on our show a couple of weeks ago. Uh, actually, I got so probably like two months ago. Um, you know, uh, and he's a huge wasn't, Broadway wasn't star. Park, Parker was on our show. No, too. we've never had Parker on the show. You sure, I thought we. Had. But here's some of the people in it. Judy, how do you pronounce Judy's last name correctly? Do you know? Geeson. Okay, she was. In, she's been in a ton of stuff, you guys. Yancey Butler, Julian Curtis, Parker Stevenson, uh, Aaron Forrest, who's in a bunch of other movies with you. I, I noticed yeah, on IMDb. Crazy. Amanda Grace, Adam Jacobs. Um, so it's got a, it's got a really great cast. Uh, it's got a really great story. And I love that it's not a bounce camera. There's still <laughs> shots, so I don't get nauseous watching. And and the sound is good, and everybody's enunciating, so I don't have to listen to Marlon Brando. <laughs> oh, even Dave Hughes is saying Judy's a great English actress these, these are points that are so important to older audiences you know the young filmmakers they make it where they they don't realize that half of us can't hear and we we need you know where that you have to satisfy everybody and i think this film is clear-cut good judy judy geeson was with in to sir with love with sydney Poitier. okay in well, 1967 that's, well, that's quite a movie yeah, that's quite a movie. And yeah. so I want to know what it was like because like I've actually talked to lots of different people who've worked with Bruce Reisman, since I messed up his name earlier. Tell yeah. us, how was it working with Bruce? Because I heard he's a phenomenal to work with um, and he's an, he's an actor's director. He is. You know, I've known him for many, many years. Um, we've worked together on a few different films. We did As Long As I'm, um, as long as I'm Famous. Um, this, he has the sequel to Last Call in the Doghouse that's actually in pre-production um, right now as we speak. And he's just, he's a huge um, theater, theater buff, musical buff. Um, he grew up in that time frame. He loves rehearsal. Um, oh, oh, you, you know. <laughs> wait, wait, back it up, back it up. What was the word you just said? Uh, I heard rehearsal. that word. Oh, what is that exactly? <laughs> Something we don't do anymore. On, no, on and I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Anyway, Listen. he's a uh, he's a, just a, a beautiful human being um, and a very gifted writer director and like you said he's he he really makes you on set feel comfortable. You can do your own thing, but you in rehearsals we play with all kinds of ranges and then by the time we put the cameras up, um, even though I was opposed to the rehearsal in the beginning, um, I found it I loved it. By the time. After the first day, I was like, let's do this more. I was way into it. You were opposed to a rehearsal? <laughs> well, I, it was a lot I of be time. I beg, like, I put beg. the camera up and see what happens. No, 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 no. I beg for a rehearsal because the chemistry right. doesn't work unless you warm it up a little bit. Right, true. Oh, no, I think no, 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 no. no. To no rehearsal time that that's just the way it is. No, you can rehearse. I have a, wait, wait. I have a question about that then, because I know you do a lot of you do a lot of cool indie films. Back when you were doing network stuff, did they rehearse? Like, did you rehearse on Baywatch and and, and all those shows, or no? Yeah, no. You get on set, you run it a few times, you block it, you shoot it. Okay. So you years I mean, ago, some not. of you would do table readings on, like which way would you do table readings? <laughs> Um, I did table was, readings and I did rehearsals and then we did uh, we did one rehearsal before the shoot. If it, you know, big and these were very big movie stars I worked with. They weren't kids; they were pros. You know, like the Betty Davis people. You know what I mean? They knew their shit, but they insisted on a rehearsal. They wanted to see what the other jerk is going to do and how they're going to do. No, 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 no. He 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 I, does films and he's like, where am I? Where are my marks and stuff? And they oh, I, there no, are no, no marks. No, no. Where do I go? Oh, no, just walk over there someplace. I, I, the I camera can't. will follow you. You know, I, I asked one time with my key light. They said, what's that? I said, OK, <laughs> who's shooting this film? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> But anyway, I wanted to say something. I saw two guys, you know, Jimmy and I are both married. We're celebrating our 10th year wedding anniversary in October. And I'm yeah. happy to I'm happy to see that your film shows two men getting married, Jewish men getting married, breaking, yeah. the, breaking the glass. And I, that makes me very happy. So oh, Bruce actually That's wrote. Cool. Bruce wrote, David's not used to rehearsal because the business has changed so much. We rehearsed yesterday for the sequel, and it was great. 
No, but you know what? I I, I rehearsed with Angie Stevens. Oh, my God. Angie Stevens and one of the sexiest, most gorgeous women in the world. We went off to a dark corner and people were starting to whisper. And I said, cut it out, you filthy minded people. We're, we're rehearsing. Angie and I ran our lines together. And then I said to her, listen, why don't we do this? She said, yeah, let's run. Let's do that. And when it, we shot it, it was wonderful. It was better than anybody else's work because we had ironed it out on our own. Wow. Uh, do you do that? Do you pull people over? Like Pamela, did you get her in a dark corner and say, let's rehearse? <laughs> oh, of course. I mean, you know, that's. That, that, that part goes without saying, you know, especially if you have any time before, you know, they're ready to block. Um, I was always one to say, let's grit, let's run this. Let's run as many times as we can before. Yeah. We, don't, we don't get the allotted time we need. So you got to, you know, you got to make the most of your time on set. Well, I find when I have to deliver a line that's really tough, because I do a lot of tough lines, they write them for me. And with women, it, it can all, almost come off like I'm a, a macho guy beating up a woman. And I don't like that. So I tell the woman, when I deliver this line to you, maybe you should do this facial expression like, you're a moron. Oh, okay, stupid. You know what I mean? Not frightened. And a lot of this one person and she was a pretty famous actress she agreed with me she said no ron she said you're very frightening on camera she said when you get into that tough guy you know gangster role you really are frightening and she was frightened so i said well don't react frightened react like forget about it stupid so, nobody. so you guys this is uh so this is last call in the doghouse it's available on amazon prime it's also available on stony point hyphen entertainment.com uh which um uh, David also has another film that he did before he did this movie. It's called As Long As I'm Famous, Real Secrets of the Golden Age. It's also a Bruce Reisman movie. Wait, 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 I want to hear him talk about that. That interests me. Hang on. Wanna... No, it's a t- talking about the Golden Age. I know. Age I know. I'm going to let him. T- so tell us a you little talk bit about too much. it. Let him talk. Let him. Uh, <laughs> you well, tell me. T- you tell me about it. Don't listen to him. Well, no, no he's doing a good job. As long as I'm famous. No, no. Uh, as long as I'm famous is, is exactly what Jimmy said. It's a, it's a time period in the golden era, uh, the golden age of Broadway. And um, we, Bruce again, had these relationships back in the day with um, um, Joshua Logan. And um, in the movie, it's Montgomery Clift. And I play Gene Tunney, who was the real, you know, like uh, heavyweight boxer in 1929. And the movie takes place in 1940. And it's all about, you know, it takes place at this Connecticut home where they would all retreat to all these these actors and writers and um, and then all this this kind of cheating on their partners or hooking up with, you know, even though like the the uh, the relationships of the two guys in the movie, Montgomery Clift and um, oh, my God, I'm blanking. Bruce, who's the other one? Rock Hudson, Bruce. probably. Takes place in 1948, New York. Oh, 40 rock. My, anyway, actually, it was taboo to have to be in an openly gay relationship back then. Yeah. So we explored that kind of a storyline. And we explored my character who had mental problems. And um, it, it was like beautifully shot. But we shot in this um, Bruce's agent's gorgeous house up in Bel Air. And it, the house itself is just. It, it's just right out of that time. Okay, era. okay. This I want to see instant, immediately. When do, when can I see this film? Right. This is up my alley. When can I see this film? Where is this one? Amazon Prime also. Amazon Prime Video. Right now we could get it like tonight? With yes, dinner? you can. Okay, we're watching. Yep. We're, we're, Actually, you'll like this because you know who's in it. So Michael Pere is in it. Oh, I know yeah, Michael. Sorry. I know I Michael for hun- Michael, I know I, Michael 100 Pere. years ago. Tracy Nelson, who's in tons of stuff in like the eighties. Also Montgomery Clift and everybody else you're going to name it. People. Eric like, yeah. Lutz plays Richard Rogers. Aaron Forrest, who's also in Last Call of the Dog House, in the Dog oh, House, plays Sid. Um, I don't know. That's who he's Sidney Lumet. Yes, yeah, so that, that's who directed me and that kind of woman. Could you believe it? I was my first movie. Wow. I was directed by Sydney. I mean, how do you not do that today? You can't. It's amazing. Yeah, my a nineteen years old boy soldier. I was a soldier. Sydney, Limit, Sophia, and Tab. And I remained friends with Tab all those years until he passed. So Bruce says it's like a George Cukor movie. Oh, I cannot wait tonight. With and Bruce says David is so good and famous that people don't recognize him. Now, who do you portray again, uh, David? Bruce? I love you. <laughs> oh, you play you play you portrayed uh Jim Turney, the pi- Gene Turney, I played Tony. Gene Turney, yeah. And 
it, it was it was challenging. Uh, you know, I had to. There's a scene where he's in actually in Bellevue Mental Hospital, and he has a breakdown. And because his parents in real life were immigrants from Ireland, he, his dad they both had every heavy Irish accents. And even though Gene Tunney didn't really, um, but when he has this mental breakdown, he kind of goes back into this Irish brogue and. Yeah, it's, but it's a beautiful scene with um, Eric Lutz my, and myself. Let me tell you the truth about that. He didn't have a nervous breakdown. He had his brains knocked out. He was he, he was so he, his brain bomb. his brains were so badly damaged that they didn't function like a human anymore. He was going in and out of periods of time and stuff. I I, I remember my mother. My mother was an actress, so I remember my mother telling me stories about that. Yeah. He he, yeah. he he was very beat. He was beaten very badly in the head. Yeah. So you guys, both of the films you guys are on Amazon Prime. So one of them is called As Long As I'm Famous. Real Secrets of the Golden Age is like the tagline after it. But the movie there is As go. Long As I'm Famous. And the other and the first one that we, we discussed is called Last Call in the Doghouse. Both of them star David Chokichi and both of them are written by Bruce Reisman and directed by and Bruce Reisman. And you got Reisman. two good films going for yourself, kiddo. You're lucky. Thank you, man. Thank you, Ron. No, really. He's I'm, got a lot. I, if I didn't like it, I would just keep my mouth oh, shut. And to go back to, I was... Uh, no, seriously, I don't bullshit anybody. I hate that crap, that Hollywood stuff. Oh, you're fabulous. You're wonderful. I love you. And then they turn around and say, boy, is he a dog? No, 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 no. <laughs> These are two films I'm definitely... Wa I want to watch the Hollywood one tonight with dinner, if we can stay awake. We're so so, so you guys, last call, the, uh, the tagline for last call in the doghouse is Field of Dreams meets Cheers. Um, which well, wait a minute. In the Hollywood one, I hope you didn't really... I hope they didn't write things that aren't true because I know everything about that area. You know, I'm a connoisseur. Of oh, you know, you Bruce. Bruce is very. Um, he uh, he's very articulate. Focused about that. Because the the thing with Rock Hudson with the Black Lover coming out was all bullshit. Uh, that that was movie a, was disgusting. That movie was so bad. Uh, I wanted, did you see Hollywood? I wanted to burn every print of that, like mini series that they did about it Hollywood. It was such a lie. He didn't yeah. like it. Oh, it's, oh, on, it it's was, on Netflix. It was such. I knew Rock Hudson. I was on his show. I I knew him as Roy as my butt, not buddy, but a friend. And he was so in love with somebody else who was not black. And Rock never went to the Academy Awards hand in hand with a black man saying I'm gay. I mean, Rock would have killed. When we shot. McMillan and wife, there was a line that Rock didn't like, and he told Script Girl, "Could we change that? It's a bit feminine." Okay, that's how he protected his gayness. He was so he never would make a gay move or a gay gesture. If he did, he said, "Tell me, I want to reshoot it." And he's going to walk in the Academy Awards with a black lover and say, "I'm gay." Get the fuck out! Of here. <laughs> did you see what Bruce just said about everything and every incident every incident? And as long as I'm famous, is real. Told good, him personally, good Bruce, because I'm watching and I know I was. Hey, that's my my. You, you talked with Bruce about that when he was on the show. He was on our show, Bruce. When was he Bruce on our show? When, with uh, Mar uh, Jacobs. Uh, oh, I remember with him. Adam Jacobs. We had a little bit of trouble with the Wi-Fi, but yes, yes you yeah. loved oh, it. You I loved, loved it. him. What are you talking about? He's my pal. <laughs> yes. No, he's he's all about my era. That's forties and fifties is my era. Are you kidding? So we have we oh, okay now I'm now I'm gonna really love the film. You're gonna like love it. So no, I have a couple really of so it. everybody Amazon Prime Field of I mean uh, Last Call in the Doghouse and um, as long as I'm famous I want to I want to do a bucket list question. This is something I like to ask all the famous actors. And you're a good actor, so you're gonna make the film quality. Thank you, thank you. No, I appreciate you, that. Did, did you have to learn to box moves, jumps, and stuff? Well, we did. We rehearsed at, actually in my house for days. We rehearsed in the pouring rain. And Aaron Fors, um, we just he directed all the boxing, and it was Gavin Adams, Aaron, and myself over and over. And then we took it to the stage where Bruce, we had rehearsals. So to get that boxing down, it was it, it took a lot, but we it looks amazing. And it, Bruce had it switched between color and black and white, and it's oh, I love that. I love that dynamic effect. Now, how tall are you? Me, five ten. Okay, so you're perfect height because Johnny was about that height. Yeah, it's perfect. And you're a light, you're a lightweight body. I uh, yeah, that was the only thing I couldn't do. I do. I Bruce is like, you got to gain like thirty pounds, and I was like, what, man, I can't. If I gain thirty pounds, oh, hang out with me for a week. I'll get you thirty pounds. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> just eat some Italian food. All right. I, so I look at food and gain 30. So pounds. bucket list questions. Now you've done all these fabulous things. Uh, so bucket list, uh, a male and a female actor that you Wait, have. I want, I want to ask you one question. Are you married? Yes, I am married and I have a beautiful nine year old daughter. Good for you. Take care of that child. She's That's valuable. Right. She's she is your future, my friend. Right. I have two daughters, wonderful daughters. They're all women now, but they are my beautiful. <laughs> well, they're coming there. They are the they are one of the reasons I live. No, oh, I, I know that feeling. Okay, so you're a good dad. Good Absolutely, for you, good for you, daddy. Good, so good for you, daddy. So bucket list: male and female actor that you have not had a chance to work with yet that you would like to work with. They could be living or dead, even like, you know, just to make it fun. And if you could have been in any movie in history, what movie would you have liked to have been in? Ask them one at a time. Otherwise, they no, that way he gets to think about the second one while he's answering the first one. Because it's a hard question. The second one first, I would say, I don't know, Saving Private Ryan. Oh, the great movie. Nobody's ever said that, too. No, that's an interesting choice. Why? I, I, uh, first of all, I'm fascinated with history and and war and um and how people have the courage to overcome something as fear as fearful as d-day as getting off a boat on that day and storming normandy um so and, and just the you know the way the movie was shot it was just so realistic and you know that one or band of brothers they're they're kind of my two one oh good two great one i love band of brothers okay yeah, and, the, and give us an actor and an actress you'd like to work with because we gotta let him go he's got another thing to do um <laughs> wow maybe pick living it'll be easier yeah 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 I'm trying to think. <laughs> hey, you know i've always loved brad pitt's work so i'll pick him because he's a Guys, do you want to lose weight fast? Have more energy and improve your health? Now you can with Nutrisystem for men. Get delicious breakfasts, lunches, and dinners, even snacks and shakes delivered right to your door. All delivered for free. It's easy to follow and you'll see results in your first week. Go to Nutrisystem.com slash meal now and get 50% off everything. And with their new premium meals, guys get bigger, bolder meals with up to 30 grams of protein and 25% more calories to keep you feeling Feeling full and satisfied as you drop the pounds. Just go to Nutrisystem.com slash meal right now and get 50% off. You heard me right. Go to Nutrisystem.com slash meal right now and get 50% off everything. Forget about takeout and fast food. Nutrisystem for men is real food and real simple. It's all planned out and delivered right to your front door. Don't wait. This special offer will not last forever. Just go to Nutrisystem.com slash meal right now and get 50% off. Go to Nutrisystem.com slash Slash meal. A beautiful human being. And not according to Angie. <laughs> <laughs> and and I know Angie really well. Angie grew up in my house. She lived around the corner on Roxbury. We live out Spalding. My daughter Deirdre is girlfriends with her. They went to school together. <laughs> oh no kidding. <laughs> yeah. She I gave her peanut butter and jelly sandwiches as a kid in my house. Well, I'll let him get a, a female. Go, go, go. Uh female? Jeez. Uh, that one's tough. I, I I always identify with the male actors because those are the roles I know I can yes. be in. Um, uh, How about a good dramatic role with Sophia Loren who's making a big comeback? There we go. <laughs> Sophia Loren. There we go. All right, she's everybody. So you, She's going to get the Academy Award, you know. She's the winner. Yeah. She, oh, yeah. For her film, have you seen it? No. Oh, she's brilliant. It's on yeah, Netflix. The most brilliant actress of our day. She's not attractive anymore. She's very old and homely and couldn't care less. No makeup, no camera angles that make her look pretty. And her performance was absolutely my scary, mind boggling. Please watch it. My God. Okay. So hang on two things. Cause, and this is for Bruce. Cause I've got Barry telling me we got to get you going. But Bruce said, um, ask him how Brit fed the actors off camera without being asked to. She knew and then I'm trying to get David to do a play. Help me out, guys. <laughs> yeah, so Britt's my daughter, and she was in um, she was in Last Call in the Doghouse, and she plays Adam Jacobs' daughter when we, we when we do a flashback to Poland in 1940, and they stop the train and they tell the Adam, who's um, a Polish Jew, and his daughter to get off the train, and they're like, "What do you mean get off?" And they'd say, "Run." 
and they were they're going to practice target practice on these they're on good. adam and my daughter anyway it's a great scene because we come in and i end up grabbing my daughter and yanking her out of there we're playing these um these rebels who are trying to fight against the the nazis and um and so that was a really cool moment and what was the other one um oh he wants you to star in a play i'm ready bruce i think i'm actually finally ready Okay, there you heard it, and uh, five million witnesses, Bruce. <laughs> Bring it. Bring it. All right, so you guys can follow David Chokachi on Instagram. He's the real David Chokachi. Chokachi is C H O K A C H I on Twitter. He's the real Chokachi, and we want to thank you for coming on the show. We so appreciate it, and good luck with everything. If you've got anything you ever want to promote, let us know. And everybody, go to Amazon Prime and check out Last Call in the yes. Dog House. And as long as I'm famous. Yeah. And, and Dave, thank you for a nice interview. Oh, right? Jimmy, Ron, you're, you're a nice, you're a nice guy. You guys are amazing. It's so easy, and you make it super fun. <laughs> thank you Great. so much, and Barry Rogers, thank you for setting this whole yes. thing up. And we'll see you thank soon, you, David. All right, Bye, have guys. a good one. See you Thanks, Bruce. I'll see you tonight in your movie. You yes. better be good. There we um, go. Please, or watch else it. I'm going to call you and tell you you stink. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do Bye, that. Bye, David. Thank you. No, Bye. he won't. He knows it's going to be Bye, good. Bye, David. bye. Bye, bye, David. All right, everybody. Nice fella. Nice fella. What a cool guy. Yeah, um, he's nice, got a great publicist. Nice guy. Well, look what I look like. And Bruce oh, is God. fabulous, oh, so you got to like love the whole thing. You know the expression when they say I look like the wreck of the Hespers? I never understood what that meant until now. Oh, my God. You know, if, when you're old and you don't sleep, you look wretched. No, you get uglier. You got to like you love get, the whole like thing. Your nose gets swollen and your eyes shrink and they swell. I look like I got beat up. So here's what we're going to do, you guys. Let me do a quick commercial where everybody can hear can, us. Can we pull that camera back um, a little? No. So what's up? You guys can listen to the Jimmy Star Show live, uh, W4CY Radio, our home station. We're on every Wednesday from 12 to 2 p.m. Pacific time, 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time. You can also hear us on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Radio Public, TuneIn, Pandora, and SoundCloud. We're also on a bunch of other platforms, but those are the biggest ones. Um, and uh, we want to thank everybody in the chat room. I think some other people joined us, but I'm not sure who. If I forgot you, I'm sorry because there's so much going on. But B. Claudia is with us, and I don't know if I said hi to B earlier. So hello, B. B. We love you. Yay. Uh, what we're going to do now, you guys, is take a little break, and then when we come back, we're going uh, to play a music video. Uh, when we come back, we'll tell you about our trip to New York. It was a lot of fun. You guys, I think, will love it. And um, we also want to welcome Jason Taylor. Uh, the Three Geeks podcast has is, is joined us. I think, that's, I think he's Three Geeks podcast. If he's not, I'm sorry. I fucked it up. <laughs> I'm tired. And... Uh, um, so what we're going to do now is play uh, Special Day is the name of the song. The artist's name is John Butcher. B. Claudia is a big, uh, what do you call it? A big like promoter of this. She loves this song. It's a fabulous song. It's really, really good. Um, so, Roxy, you got it ready to go? I'm sure she does. Yep, I got it ready. All right, everybody. So check it out. This is off the brand new album, Special Day. It's the first single to the name of It Is Special Day by John Butcher, Grammy nominee. Enjoy.
I'm Butcher, you guys. Uh, we actually, uh, he performed this weekend at the Soho Johnny Celebrity Benefit Concert Gala uh, at Rumi Event Space on Saturday for 911. He was one of the performers, so we got to actually meet him after we've had interviewed him on the show. He was super cool. We met him and his wife and his producer and his wa- and her wife and his wife, and uh, it was awesome. Um, so the whole thing was great. So now we're going to tell you a little bit about our weekend. Um, Because it was really a lot of fun. And one of the people that I enjoyed the most um, was the girl that we had on the week before, Cresha Turner, you guys. The girl who was in all the music videos and is a movie star and four-time Juno Award nominee. More beautiful in person than she was on screen. And the nicest girl ever. We had such a good time with her. It wasn't even funny. Oh, everybody's saying hi to Astro. You want to hold him up to this thing? There's Astro. Hey. (laughs) <laughs> Ron missed Astro so much. There was a little lady with a dog sitting next to us on the plane going over there, and it made Ron almost cry because she had her dog and Astro was at home. So he was so excited to get home to Astro yesterday. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. He hasn't left my side. He has, He slept with me, pressing his body against me. He hasn't stopped kissing me, moaning and groaning when I hug him. He really loves me, and I love him, and he misses me so much. I'm going to have to take him with me. So I inquired, you have to buy a, buy a baby ticket, you know, what a child would cost, a round trip, and then you have to keep him confined to a, a case. Okay, so we guy. have to get a case and get him used to being in it to see if he could it, do the it. The only thing is, when I go to events and stuff, I can't leave him in the hotel room alone because he'll cry. He's get, he'll be frightened. So really and truly, having a little pet like this is heavenly, but not at times, you know, hot breaking i don't like leaving him especially these these dogs are very high strung and sensitive they could flip out so tell everybody what do you think of Cresha turner besides the fact that you couldn't remember her name we got great pictures with her by the way she's fabulous my thrill was was um kim sledge no but first tell them about Cresha because like she was on our show i did trisha what, no, you, what, 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 what more do you want to say did you like her was she nice did, did you i think like she was pretty her? of course i i please Jimmy, I'm tired. Don't suck. It's like this mic. I'll put it right up your ass and you'll never know what it is. <laughs> you may love that. But she anyway. was so cool, you guys. She, she was, was a doll. She's sweet. She's beautiful in person. One of the best performances of the night. And she was very, night. very respectful of me and very, very caring of me. And I really like her a lot. And then one of her invited guests that she brought was Mario Van Peebles. You guys know him from like the Ali movie and New Jack City and a bunch of other things. He's a super famous actor. And he was very, very cool. He showed up in a in a cowboy hat. So we got to like meet him and talk with him. And then um, Kim Sledge stayed in our hotel. And so we got to see her in the hotel. And- That's what I was going to talk go ahead. about. Go Ma- for it. Mariconetta. Well, go. I mean, you want to cut into my little shit? Go. Go. Kim Sl- I know Kathy. Sledge. Now I know Kim Sledge. They are the loveliest of lovely women. Women should learn from them. So I asked Kathy when I interviewed her years ago, how did you get to be so lovely? She said, our mother. We had a mother who taught us the right thing. Now being with Kim all that time, Kim Sledge, she told me the same thing. So I said, you should write a script. And Kim said, we have a script. I said, well, Jimmy, I think has the people that can maybe fund your movie. And we could see the life story of Sister Sledge. Sledge. And I've got to tell you, the mother sounds like a, a, like a saint. She raised them to be the, the most respectful, lovely, no racism, no hate, no nothing. They're just beautiful, be- the most two of the most beautiful people I've ever met in my life, and I love both of them very much. But Kim, I really got close with. She gave uh, you a CD. Oh, and what she wrote in the CD was just phenomenal. I mean, just the most beautiful sentiment she wrote for me. Beautiful. So while we were there, Kim's daughter came another, also. Another beauty. And she is like a young Kim Sledge. Another she's beauty. a singer and a model, and she was gorgeous. Same class, same elegance, same well-bred person. These people are just beautiful people. Oh, we didn't welcome Pat Grant either. Pat Grant Why joined us from Canada. Out? Get this fly off my cup. Get out of here. The fly would get off my cup. <laughs> we have a fly. That's funny. A fly wouldn't leave my cup. I must actually too. You guys I almost drank the fly. On the uh, if you go on my Instagram, you guys, we still have more pictures that we haven't put up yet. But if you go on my Instagram, um, there's one video of Cresha Turner and I while Kim Sledge is singing, and then there's another video where Kim is on stage and Kim's daughter is on stage, and all of us are on stage and we're singing. 
uh, what's the name of the song? Don't Stop Believing. And it's everybody who was a singer in the place that was still there at the end of the show. They're all singing. And in the background, it's Joey Belladonna, who is actually doing the big high vocals because he's also in a Journey tribute band. And um, so he's like singing. And I have got a bunch of video of him like so because he was hiding behind everybody. But he was the voice that you really heard. Everybody wanted to know who was singing. It his, was really wife, him. his wife is Krista. a gem. Absolute gem. Krista and I got along so well. We became best friends the whole time that we were, the days that we were together. I hung out with, uh, uh, what's his name? The first thing. Joey. Joey. I hung out with Joey and his wife, Krista. Even when we went to the after party up at the penthouse apartment, uh, we hung out and we sang together. It was, it was a fabulous event. Uh, for those of you who, Oh, I can't even speak. For the, I'm so tired, folks. One thing, too, Hall, about that was so cool. So Joey showed up on Friday morning. We saw him Friday. No, Saturday morning. We saw him Saturday morning because we got there Friday night. And uh, and he was just, hey, they had just gotten up, and he, was, he said he would just had just flown in from doing a concert the night before for 90,000 people. Right. You know, and now here he is coming doing like a little thing for three or 400 people. He's the least – conceited affected affected rock star i've ever seen for somebody who's got six grammy nominations and sold millions of records he's just like a regular joe cool guy and he's we love sweetie, him he's a sweetie pie now let's talk about another cool guy so how johnny not too many of you people know who he is but those of you who do know who he is you're going to agree with me i became very close to Soho this trip. We shared limos together. We had a lot of downtime, you know, private time to talk and find out about his life and my life. And I've got to tell you, this man has a heart bigger than anybody I know. He is so caring of the world and he wants so much to raise money for his causes, which help everyone. And I'm saying everyone, not just certain people, but everyone on the planet, his benefits uh, benefit. Soho Johnny is just a terrific guy, handsome, talented. He's got a cute little song. out. I don't care for his song, but he's doing a good job singing it. Now he told me he's going to sing original work of his music that he and some big shot are creating. So that should be a, a big plus for Johnny. I, I always felt that when somebody does a cover, a cover meaning somebody else's song, you compare it. You know, how can you do faithfully or anything that Johnny Mantis has sung, you know, don't touch it because it belongs to the singer who made it famous. And Johnny agreed. But Johnny went out of his way, cost him money and time and effort, and all of us loving him so much, we all flew in and supported his benefit, and it was a great, great success. And a lot, so, of, a lot of people are going to be happier today than they were three days ago because of my buddy, Soho Johnny Pasquale. He's fabulous. And we had a, uh, he was so, so uh, warm. He's family. You know, he's like family. And well, so that's what fabulous. he said to me in the limo. I said, Johnny, how can I thank you so much for your kindness and your generosity? You've been so good to Jimmy and I. He said, hey, Ron, we are family. And I said, good. In Italian, that's important. When an Italian tells another Italian, siamo famiglia, that's what it means in Italian. Siamo Familia, we are family. And that's why I love this song so much. And Kim Sledge. So the whole evening just so, tied so, together. So then after, uh, so there was some some standout performances. One of them was Cresha Turner. One of them was Kim Sledge. Then Ron's cousin, April Rose Gabrielli, uh, she performed. Oh, let me tell about this. I, come on, come on. I'm not a great lover of what goes on today. We're jumping in music and screaming and tattoos and spears and rings and weirdnesses that's not my deal so when she got on the stage i figured another one of those screaming brats no way her choreography was fabulous not because she's my cousin but her voice is absolutely fabulous and i as far as i'm concerned again not because she's a relative she was my highlight of the evening even better than kim sledge she rocked the house and that little fella she works with what's his kulik name? kulik yes my god is he wonderful and can he sing and his choreography so you know there's a lot of young kids up out there today who are really uh talented and they're not necessarily doing all that weird stuff 
which covers their talent. So if you guys go on Jim, my Jimmy Star official Instagram, I actually videotaped the whole Kulik and April Rose Gabrielli thing. Oh, Kulik good. was so good. Yeah. He had the audience jumping around. He jumped off the stage and ran through the crowd and jumped on the bars. I mean, he had so much energy. And, and you, then, know, you know what I found impressive is when you are singing a note, you cannot jump because your voice will go, you know, you'll yodel. And he was able to control his voice as he was leaping from furniture to stage. And that's a, a, an achievement in itself. Now, I understand that the person who represents uh, my cousin said to her, less makeup, less glitz, more talent. And that was good advice because she doesn't need the big crazy hair and makeup and whatever. Talent comes out. And she was so good, and she performed a, uh, a song we hadn't heard yet, and then she performed her hit, Do You, which right now is number 27 on the adult contemporary charts. You guys should all uh, Google it. It's one of the most Shazam Shazammed. If you use the Shazam app, it's one of the most yep. Shazam songs in the world right now. And she was so good. Um, and then another one who was really good, I don't know if you guys remember back when we went to L.A. the last time, Arrow Rose. Um, with the, the girl who lost her mother in nine, during 911, she came up and sang her Damage, which is her um, premiere first single she's ever released. And it was the first time she had ever performed in front of a crowd. And, and so she performed for 500 people on the very first time she ever performed. She was nervous going up there, but as soon as she got up there, all the nerves went away and she killed it. No, so you, I, no. she said before she went on stage, she said, Ron, oh, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. I said, if you go up there and act nervous, I'm going to come up on the stage and throw you off. I will push you right off the stage and say, ladies and gentlemen, she's too nervous to perform. She said, you would do that? I said, you bet I will do that. So don't you dare be nervous. Well, when she finished her set, she came back down. She said, thank you so much. She said, because I wasn't nervous. I was worried about what you were going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the other cool people who performed that we met, Manny Cabo from The Voice. He's the... Um He's a rocker guy, and you guys know him if you watch The Voice because he's got the, the most watched videos of anybody who, who uh, auditioned for The Voice as a rocker. And then we hung out with Felipe Rose from um, The Village People who performed his new song. He was on the show last week shortly, and he gave me one of his, like, feathers from his, like, feather thing that he wears as the Indian from The, so now the we Village know, People. We, we know Randy and we know uh, Felipe. Yeah, Randy Jones and Felipe Rose. Two people from The Village People. But the, this Wendy Stewart, my God, looking absolutely stunningly gorgeous. Oh, like yeah. Beautiful dress she had on, and her hair was done by Mark uh, uh, Diolis, and it was magnificently done. And she didn't stop rocking, dancing, running, going, doing, hugging, photographing. Where that broad gets her energy from. I and her husband, know. Alan, was and there. Al well, Alan was there like me in half a coma. <clears throat> you know, Alan and I were being led around like the ancient ones, and Wendy was just flying like like from Peter Pan. Wendy and we saw all our friends. Ike Veli was there. Oh, it was so good to see Nick Ike. Lyon. I haven't seen Ike in a long time, and Nick was so good to see. Um, it was just Nick Lyon. Who else did we see? Mark Alwis, Mark, Mark Alwis, and, and Billy Hess, Billy Hess, and Eileen Shapiro, of course, who I love and adore. Um, you know, Eileen's one of my dearest friends. Las Vegas singer Chris Ruggiero was there. Right. Um, and a crowd, a lot of people in the crowd, famous people in the crowd. Lottie Da from Leather and Lace with right. Big Disco and I, Group. And I was in the back resting and caught, you know, trying to calm down a little bit with um, Mickey Burns. Mickey and I TV were, host. TV host. Tulip. <laughs> TV host Mickey Burns and I were back there giving some good advice to a young kid who's getting a radio show or was it what, what we have whatever that crap. podcast podcast and leon oh leon leon is so cool you guys we love leon i said leon why why didn't you sing love is a beautiful thing i love that song so much and he said well i couldn't bring my orchestra he said i don't do it to track and i said good for you so he did another song which was really good leon is terrific he's an actor uh he's been in a lot of movies he was in the uh tina turner movie he played. Uh, who did he play in the Tina? I don't know. If he was life, in the Tina Turner movie. Well, he was in one of those life. Those. No, he he did the life of David Ruffin of the Temptations. He was played David. Oh, Ruffin. right, that's what it was. He played David Ruffin. He also he's been in all. So and many he was things. married cool to one of the housewives of somewhere uh, of Atlanta. Of Atlanta, and he's just the coolest guy. 
I love Leon. And then I'm looking at pictures. Sari Shore was there. She yeah. was. She didn't perform, but she supported. She's a Grammy nominee, I think. Um, and of course, we're not going to forget Soho Johnny's assistant, Gail. 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 You know, ran John Velasco. Around. Yeah, Gail. Wait, I will get there. Gail ran around making sure that everything was put together correctly. And Gail is just a super duper gal. Uh, but a, one of the nicest people I've met. And uh, Shitty Princess was there. I, mean, I don't care for that. <laughs> I, I still can't get over that shit. I her mean, name was Shitty Princess. I announced her. It was funny. And she wears a, a, a crown, like a princess crown, yeah. over a lampshade. So you don't actually know what she looks like. Good for her. Because <laughs> with a name like that, who'd want to be known? John Velasco was there, and we yes, love John Velasco. We, we love, had lunch we with love, him Monday, breakfast with him Monday. We love him, and I got out of him so many stories about great celebrities. Did you know that he picked up Tina Turner when she was with Ike, okay, before she became the Tina Turner, and he created her and made her into Tina Turner. I thought, wow, what an achievement, because I love Tina Turner, and what you see today is all because of John. And all the movie stars that he's known, we had a great time, you know, talking about, you know, similar friends in the business. He's a brilliant man, and he's a very successful man, and he's probably one of the most important people in our business today. He's fabulous. And then we met this really cool guy, and I'm sorry I forgot his name, but he stars in Kinky Boots on Broadway. Oh, oh, uh, oh, yes. I forgot his name, but his outfit was outrageous. Yes, his name is, oh, oh. Oh, and then we also we also saw we met. I got to finally meet. Um, oh shit! Now I forgot his name. Holy moly! That's terrible. Anyway, uh, the we're very tired. The guy from Click Magazine, you guys. So the very first episode of Click Magazine came out. They do two covers: one on the front and one on the back. Oh, also speaking of hey, wait, let me finish this real quick. So and in this magazine, the very debut issue, there's an article on on Ron's uh, cousin, April Rose Gabrielli. There's a because it was fashion week. There's a, an article on Philip Block, who was on our show not too long ago. There's one on um, Soho Johnny and there's one on Ron's favorite person in the world. I'm looking for the page. Pat, Patty LaBelle? No, pa favorite person that you know. Oh. Who? Oh. Su Wong. Oh, Su Wong. Su Wong is oh, good. Magazine. Yeah, I'm going to see Su in two weeks. I can't wait. So Su Wong, April Rose, Gabrielli, Philip Block. Uh, and it's a beautiful magazine. It's a real magazine, not online. So it's really cool. And yeah. then the other, the, the New York's number one gay magazine was there. Jimmy's Get Out Magazine. Get Out Magazine, and he is Jimmy's oldest friend. Yeah, we've been friends for like 25 years or something. Well, what's his name? Michael Todd. He okay. owns Get Out Magazine. <laughs> I worked with him in Florida, believe it or not. I worked with him in Florida for about 10 years, and then he moved to New York and started a magazine. And then we got, met Eileen, and Eileen, I didn't know what magazine he started. And when we met Eileen, Eileen said she writes for Get Out Magazine. And we went someplace to meet the people from Get Out. And it was Mike's Magazine, which I didn't know. And it ended up, you know, that we've been friends forever. So, so it was like six degrees of separation. And then one year we were on the cover. Jimmy and I were on the cover of that magazine. And I was very thrilled. You know, that uh, yes, they, that he thought that much of us, usually as these very sexy women or handsomely uh, built muscle-bound men on the cover. And then suddenly he puts these two old goats, Jimmy and I. You know, if I faint, everybody, it's not that I drop dead. It's I'm falling asleep. So then Sunday, you guys, so Johnny took us uh, as one of his guests to the um, I'll do Festa it. Italiana, it was called. Una Festa Italiana. And everybody there was Napolitan, Sicilian, and mostly Southern Italian people. Um, when I walked in, I was greeted by the uh, wise guys. They really flipped out, and I flipped out for them. You guys but, remember they were on our minute, show. I know, minute. but they don't know who they are. You got to tell them going, who they are. You know, you know what? This microphone is going to go right between Just tell them who they I'm are. I'm going to give you black and blues all over you your head and face. Tell them who they are. No, I'm, first I want to hit you with this mic, black and blue. <laughs> yeah. I want to see big black and yes, blues. Yes, Teresa, Festa Italiana. I want to see big black and blues all over go. your face. Tell them. No. You have to look like an eggplant. Here, I'll tell them. No, you're not going to tell them. Because I got all the people I'll that put were there. That, that phone right down your throat. Okay, go. I hate him. Why am I? Why is he on my show? Yeah. <clears throat> anyway. 
the wise guys who I, I think are the best, the, the, the real Guido guys, tough guys. And they greeted me with such a reverence and hugging me and said, oh, Ron, I'm so happy you came. Blah, 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 blah. They were on our show not too long ago, and I was on their show. And they're on their, their radio. And one of the fellas said to me while we were eating, he said, Ron, what can I do to make our show better? I said, get rid of the radio. Go podcast like Jimmy and I do. You know, Skype. He said, you know, we should do that. But the other ones don't want to do it. I said, just threaten the other ones that you'll have them killed if they don't do it. And they'll do it. So I'm going to see now. If they televise their uh, show, it's going to be a great hit. Great people. Now, I meet the mother of one of the fellas who's a lovely, lovely old Italian lady, beautiful woman. And she said to me, oh, the food here is no good. You're going to need it food here. Come to my house. I'm going to give you food. I can make a beautiful pasta for you. I make I own a bakery. She said, I give you every one of the pastries for free. And I thought she was adorable. So the love and the warmth of the Italian people made me so happy because I was home. And I remember what that was like growing up in Brooklyn, where everybody opened their doors and said, Vieni, vieni, mangia, mangia, eat a qualche cosa, what you didn't eat? No, you're so skinny, come over here, eat. You go to an Italian house in Brooklyn, and suddenly they whip out three course meals. And that's warm because the Italians. When they cook for you, it's uh, what they're saying is, you know, food it makes you feel good, and I want you to feel good knowing me. So it really was a wonderful time for me. The music was fabulous. A fellow went up there and sang opera, and he sang, um, oh my God, the songs that he sang. I almost cried oh, from the, or No, not also the one that was "Ti voglio bene," "Ti voglio sia," which means "I love you." "Ti voglio bene," "I love you good." It's a very famous piece. Da, 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 I ti voglio bene. Da, da, da. Anyway, it was make made water in my eyes because I thought of my family. And then the food came out. And it's a country club under a tent. We were under a beautiful big white tent. And the food wasn't so hot because it's cooked by probably not even Italians in the kitchen. And the uh, you know zeppole zeppole are little lumps of dough thrown in oil, and then they put confection. God, they're shit. good. Well, they weren't <laughs> good. J to Jimmy, who doesn't know them, good tasted like motor oil. I thought the chicken parmesan was the great. Chicken, <laughs> the chicken parmesan was soggy, you know, and mushy, and way overcooked. The sauce wasn't good. The pasta wasn't. It was edible, but it, I mean, in California, it would have been gourmet. But in New York, it, in New Jersey, it was considered not good at all. They were so nice, though. The people, you guys, well, they had a bunch of Italians. And they nice. had a bunch of performers. Like I said before, Alicia was like the headliner and she's, um, you know, she had those songs All Night Passion, Two Turned On and Baby Talk. Huge, huge number one hits in the 80s. They had this guy who I didn't know who he was, but all the Italian people, everybody knew who he was. His name's Biagio. And uh, he was fun. He had like his daughters dancing and they were beautiful. Um they had uh, uh, Joe Causey hosted it. I guess he's a famous, like um, a, a real famous, like radio DJ there. And by the way, these people are not Italians. They're Italian American. They were all born in America of Italian descent. Yeah, it was fabulous. It was a lot of fun. I had a really good time. I had a ball because it brought me home. I, I it's at that point that I said, "Oh my God, why am I out in California? Why aren't I back here with these people who make me feel so happy and so warm?" Well, then I thought about it, and I said, yeah, but they're not in my business. And I have to say and live where my business is, and my business is in California. So as long as I'm working, I'm staying in California. If ever I stop working, I will go back east as fast as my little toes can tiptoe me there. <laughs> Absolutely. So it was so much fun. Then we also uh, – then the next day we went walking around – and uh, we met John's, uh, John and Terry are Ron's dearest friends from a long time ago. Teresa Vecchio and John Vecchio. I know them since we are young people. I remember discussing Terry's. I had just gotten married. And Terry and John were asking me all kinds of questions about my marriage and our wedding. And we were discussing weddings. And then Terry bought a house out on Long Island. And we had a house out on Long Island, two miles apart. Then we had our daughter, Leslie, and they had their son, John. So we were friends with children. Now our children are grown-up people, and our friendship continues. We fight, we kill each other, we yell, we scream, we don't talk to each other for a few weeks, and then we 
talked like it never happened. Uh, real friends you don't lose. Real friends stick with you forever, no matter what. Even if you're crazy, they so, stick with you. So we took pictures in front of the, the public library where they did the Sex in the City stuff. Right. And then we went to Grand Central Station and took a picture in front of the escalator that Ron was shot that kind of woman in on. 1915. I said to Jimmy, take a picture of me right by the escalator that Tab Hunter and I went up when we were filming that kind of uh, woman with Sophia Loren uh, in 1959. And I thought to myself, Ron, you were 19 years old when you went up this escalator and now you're 81 years old. Where the frig did it go? Oh, my God, it went so quickly. Then we, uh, from there, I had a meeting, and we went to a business meeting. And then after that, we met Terry and John, and we went to Tavern on the Green and had lunch. Which is all done over. You know, for a while, there it was like it lost its value, and they had busloads of tourists coming in, and it was like crappy. Well, they got rid of that new owners, and now they brought it back to one of the most uh, sophisticated, elegant places to lunch in New York City. And we ate out in the uh, garden. The crystal room, of course, no longer has those beautiful multicolored crystal chandeliers or the fabulous fabric on the chairs. They've uh, ruined it by making it very mid-century, which doesn't work because Tavern on the Green is not a mid-century building. But the garden is lovely with the lights and the, the plants. No, it's really a lovely place to have lunch. It was great. We not, loved it. Not cheap, but worth it. Then um, we went walking around Central Park. And then as we were walking out of Central Park, I took a picture. It's called the Dakota, right? The Dakota is where Lauren Bacall lived and my buddy Peter Allen and uh, where John Lennon was shot, unfortunately. And also they filmed Rosemary's Baby. Yes, they did. The movie Rosemary's <clears throat> Baby, the original one. That's what they did there. It was super, super nice. And then we didn't want to end the night, so then we drove down to Little Italy and had pizza in Little Which Italy. Which was the most depressing thing for me in the world i remember little italy when friends of ours the uh owned restaurants down there mary puglio and her husband owned puglio's restaurant which was one of the best italian restaurants down there they're all gone they're all you know passed away uh asians took over all of uh, little italy now there's only two blocks of what's italian and it's not really Italian anymore. We ate food. It was horrible. Uh, the chefs are no longer Italian. They've all left those restaurants. Now they're other people, and their cooking is not real Italian like it used to be. So Little Italy has lost its value. Um, most of the things that I found in New York that I remembered are gone. And that's why when people say to me, did you enjoy New York? I say, well, not really, because it's not my New York anymore. My New York is long gone, and the people in it have left or have died. So New York City is a new city of new immigrants, new ways, new food, new language, new custom. And I'm just not a part of it because I'm from the old school. Um, so I will work in New York, you know, do benefits or whatever it is, but I'm, not, I'm never going to move there because it doesn't belong to me anymore. All young people, there's hardly any old people left in new york city upper east side maybe but anyway that's it it's, it's millions of young all the young guys the good looking young guys they all gym bunnies or whatever they, they all have nice bodies because they go to the gym and the same thing with the women the girls everybody's very skinny and very fit in new york city and they walk and jimmy and i walked my wristwatch went off my fibbit. It went off and uh, exploded. It said 10,000 miles and 10,000 steps. Oh, 10,000 <laughs> 10, steps. And rockets went up in the air. First time that ever happened. Because in California, we drive, we don't walk. So, what we're going to do real quick, you guys. So, you guys know Twiz and White Piece wrote the Jimmy and Ron song. I don't think because we were never allowed to play it that we've ever played the whole song. But So, we're going to actually play the music video for it now that we get to play music and videos. And so far, nobody shut us down. Um, so, we're going to be reincorporating music and videos of the guests and stuff coming on the show again, which I think is going to be terrific. But we've never done the... Um, the Jimmy and Ron song. So Roxy's going to play it for us. I'm going to. I think we should open the show with it. Let us know what you think. And uh, so, so here it is, everybody. The Jimmy and Ron song, written and performed by Twism White Piece, which we thank him so much for. It. I hope you guys enjoy it. Here you go. It's cute. It's cute. And thank you, Twiz. 
Jimmy and Ron song by Twiz and White Peace. I freaking like love it. Everybody in the chat room loved it. It's just fun. And the video was I I'm, I was dancing with CC Penniston. Finally, oh, yeah, if you guys are wondering who that is in there, yeah, yeah that's that's CC Penniston. She's coming here next week, I think. Two weeks. Two weeks for dinner because she's appearing here in Palm Springs. So we're having her over for dinner, and there'll be more pictures and more fun with CC because we love her a lot. She's another great personality and a sweetheart of a person. We'll also have some new, uh, more pictures from the weekend, you guys. We haven't put them all up yet because I know, just got like sent I some said, of them. You know, it has. It's been a, a. We did not. Please, we were going to bed five o'clock in the morning, getting up early. Jimmy would work. We'd go. We'd walk. We'd do. We went to Macy's. I had to go shopping naturally. Bought a lot of nice stuff on sale. Then we walked for lunch. I kept looking for pancakes. I said, where the frick? There's no place in pancakes for pancakes in New York anymore. You know, the years ago, there used to be diners. I love the Greek diners. The Greek diner, you go and you could get anything you wanted. And then I looked for Chinese restaurant. We had to go to Chinatown. There are no Chinese restaurants in New York City. I mean, what all, all the people eat it, gyros and tacos. That shit, it's all full of grease. It's also changed a lot. Like, we went to a diner on Sunday night for dinner and dinner for two at the diner it was like 80 bucks at a diner yeah, i mean the price <laughs> no the price is in new york rob a bank before you go i mean new york is extremely expensive two cups of coffee and two pastries were 28 dollars. yeah i mean you know they're, they're getting crazy there but they're trying to make money because of covid you know being shut down so long they need money and they're really really you know asking a lot of money from people so to eat there we spent a fortune in food and none of it was and good. the food sucked. And, you know, New York was famous for its food years ago. And I'm sorry to say not now. Okay, if you go uptown to a couple of the great restaurants, you know, Cote Boss and things like that. But they're two, three hundred bucks a person and, uh, and a little bit of food. And I was hungry. Uh, so I don't think that there's great food in California. And I don't think there's great food in New York anymore. Long Island 
Brooklyn, of course, in the Bronx has the best of everything, the best food, the boroughs of New York. But actual city of New York, well, we was, wanted good pizza. So the pizza oh, that the we pe- had sucked. I wanted Ray's pizza, and they said Ray's pizza was sold, and now it's like pizza you know taco pizzas or something they make it it's like they put taco stuff on a pizza i said no no i want like old-fashioned italian pizza i don't want mexican pizza but and then that, we wanted we wanted chinese food but we didn't want to eat the chinese food in chinatown because it didn't look so no that was so no good. that was stupid thinking when they said they eat cats and dogs that's nonsense chinatown always was a little skeevy looking um but the restaurants are just as dirty as any other restaurant in New York, or just as clean. Cockroaches are all over L.A. and New York. I mean, you can't, the cockroaches in New York are just, they're there. Rats are there also, especially with the subway being flooded. All the rats came up from the subway, and they were running wild in the streets. So, yeah, you got to watch out, but you don't eat rat crap or roaches. So it's not, eat home. I do. (laughs) I cook. I know what I'm eating. I know what I'm using. I mean, like some of the food they use motor oil. It tasted like my mouth was greasy for hours. But in spite of all the changes that New York has made, and not necessarily for the better, but it's changed. It's still a beautiful city to see. And if you override the sh- crap that I just talked about and go to the museums, fabulous or opera or the theater, theater is still wonderful and. Uh, it was fashion week while we were there. Yeah. The Met Gala was going on. I would have, if we had, if, if, I, if I didn't want to be seen as a tourist, I would have loved to go see everybody like coming in for the Met Gala. And, and, you know, a friend of mine said, would you move back to New York? I said, yes. If I lived on Park Avenue and maybe 80th Street, and if I had a chauffeured limousine, and if the limousine picked me up and took me to all the most expensive restaurants and to shop at Ralph Lauren and all the Versace and Dolce Gabbana on Madison Avenue, and at night if I could go to theater or the opera or the ballet and have a dress up, uh, yeah, sure, who the hell wouldn't live in New York? But if I have to go to New York and ride a subway, walk in the street, jump in urine puddles, nah. I'll stay in California. Visit once in a while. Visit. I like California. You know, it's funny. When I'm here, I want to be there. When I'm there, I want to be here. Do you guys ever have that feeling? Yet you don't know where you want to be? So you go you go to both. But right. I, I love New York. It's my hometown. And I always will love New York. I want to thank everybody, too, who came in on all my live streams because I did a whole bunch of live streams and a lot of the people in the chat room, uh, B. Claudia and Teresa and Don Hinton, who's not there. Hi, Don. Uh, she's having like a procedure done today. So I hope she's everything getting is a good. Shot. What kind of Some a kind shot? Some kind of a, a shot for her neck because she's got a broken yeah, I know. neck she, or something. She wrote me this morning. She said, today I get my shot in my neck. And uh, and I wanted to say, I give Jimmy a shot in the face every morning because yeah. he annoys me. But I want to thank everybody who likes uh, who was live part of the live stream it really was a lot of fun and it's the first time i've ever done it for like so such a long time so everybody could see what was going on and i want to thank everybody who watched all the videos because i got like a half a million plays over the while the time we were gone on and my I, instagram and i want to reiterate i am not mean to jimmy for real we do it for fun on the show if you knew how well i take care of jimmy you wouldn't believe it i i cook for him she also told you though you gotta remember she said that she thought you were gonna you were mean at the beginning and then as the show went on she thought you were funny as hell and it yeah, was terrific I know that, but i don't want anyone to get the impression that oh, I'm they want to show the watch so when don watches this oh, she'll see it no honey dawn this is my stay alive watch it's my fibbit fitbit I, fit what the fuck ever it's called <laughs> i wear i wear it now because i check my heart rate i just found out you know i was in central park and there were three or four women doing exercises. So I went in and I started exercising. You could do this in New York, you know. People don't care. And I began exercising with them. And you have then less I said than a minute. To, huh? You have less than a minute oh, to I tell it quick. Oh, I, anyway, I told this lady that I had a triple. She said she had a triple and it takes two years before it heals. And I thought, oh, my God. But I did speak to everybody in the street. I Jimmy will him. tell you. I'm new, old New York. I spoke conversations with everybody, and they were so friendly, and they loved it. What We were down in Ferrara's pastry shop in, in the Little Italy, and there was this young fella, nicely dressed. Jimmy said he had $300 sneakers on, and he's, I guess he was trying to hit on the old gay man. He said to me, oh, I'm homeless. Could you buy me pizza? 
I said, go to Macy's. They're hiring. Look at you. You're young. Go to get a job. You won't be homeless anymore. I said, I'm not homeless. Why? Because I work. Smarten up. Get a fucking job. And he just gave me a dirty look like I said bad things to him. Anyway, that's New York. Go. That's today. The world is crazy, but we're in it and we love it and we got to make the best of it. So we want to so wait a minute. We, we think, gotta go. We think positively. We don't do any silly stuff like suicide. That just shit we don't do. And we just go. We roll with the punches, kids, because it's called life. We want to thank everybody. And life is wonderful. Don't give it away. We got to thank everybody in the chat room. Thank our guest, David Chokachi. Uh, thanks, Barry, for setting it up. We want to thank our, our new engineer, Roxy. She's so wonderful. Thank we you, love her Roxy. to death. Yes. So you guys all have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you guys next week, and I'll see you on social media. Bye, Pat, Goddess, Cindy, Teresa, B, and we'll everybody be, in the chat room. And I'll be back. <laughs> Angela. My, I'll be back to my crazy self next week when I'm rested and, and I've slept. Backpack proper. John. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, see you everybody. next week. Bye. Woo. Yeah, we in the mix. Yeah, we in the mix. It's another episode. Here we go. The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Interviewing the hottest, newest, and truest of today's celebrities. Make sure to subscribe so you can get notified weekly. Jimmy Star, he's the king of cool. Ron Russell, he's a gorgeous dude. Chat room is live and you would be a fool not to vibe with us. At the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Come watch it live on W4CY Radio. Miss some past episodes? Download on iTunes. The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. It's the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Excited for a road trip? Start it off right with auto coverage from American Family Insurance. J.D. Power ranked us number one in customer satisfaction with the auto insurance shopping experience among mid-size insurers. Get a quote at AmFam.com. American Family Insurance. For J.D. Power 2021 award information, visit JDPower.com slash awards. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, SI and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. At Kings Island, it's never too early to start thinking about next year's fun. That's why we're offering the lowest price of the year on a 2022 Gold Pass right now. That includes unlimited visits this year, so you can enjoy Tricks and Treats Fall Fest, Haunt, and Winterfest. Then unlimited visits next year to try new foods, hang with the Peanuts gang at Planet Snoopy, scream on our world-class coasters, and splash away at Soak City Water Park. All for as low as $105 plus applicable taxes and fees. Hurry, offer ends soon, so get your gold pass now at visitkingsisland.com. It's amazing in here.